just who I am Won't you tell them I am redeemed Where there was hate Love now abides Where there was confusion Peace now reigns I'm walking with Jesus I'm a child of the King It's all because I am redeemed I am redeemed I've been bought with a price has changed my whole life If anybody asks you just who I am Won't you tell them I am redeemed Won't you tell them I am redeemed Living Faith for Today is brought to you by Share the Vision Ministries and hosted by Rev. Joshua A. McClure, former pastor of the Pleasant Street Baptist Church, Westerly, Rhode Island. Pastor McClure is an educator, counselor, and one of today's most gifted writers and authors. He has published a Christian learning library of 12 highly acclaimed, award-winning books, along with numerous articles, including a two-year Bible-based church school studies curriculum, K-12. through His most recent book was published in Seoul, Korea. And now, here's Pastor McClure with today's message. Welcome to Living Faith for Today, and we're delighted you're here to share in this message from a living God. In the book of Ephesians, the Apostle Paul reflects on the moral condition of Gentile believers before they've experienced the saving power of God in Christ. And Paul says, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, You used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. But now they have been saved. Paul prods them to remember their former state in terms of their religious condition, now viewed in contrast with the religious privileges of Israel. Formerly, The Gentiles had no expectation of the Messiah to light the future, no part of the holy community to which God granted his presence, no interest in the promises of divine blessing, no hope of a life to come. For they had no knowledge of the one living and true God who had revealed himself to Israel. However, because of God's intervention, They had been brought into fellowship of God in Christ, the same as the Jews. He urges them to look back and keep in front of them what they were and what they are now, and not with the feeling of one who is filled with pride, but with the feeling of those whom God has raised, a feeling that ought to produce the deepest humility and gratitude. And Paul continues to speak of their past under two aspects, one having chiefly to do with their outward condition, the other having to do with their inward. Outwardly, they were Gentiles, called uncircumcised aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and destined to keep their distance from the Jews. Inwardly, they were worse off, because of five negatives cited in their condition. They were without Christ, without a country, without promises, without hope, and without God. What an accumulation of miseries the Gentiles had to deal with. And yet, in verse 13, we find one of the brightest verses in Scripture. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away 
have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Now, all of us today might take a cue from these verses. For I believe it is good for us to remember where we came from. And every time I hear the song, Amazing Grace by John Newton, I am quickly reminded where I came from. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was blind, but now I see. It helps me to know the present is built upon the past, and the memory of the past has much to do with the joys and sorrows of the present, as well as with the hopes and achievements of the future. And so it is well for all of us to remember what we had been in view of our present mercies. Now, to be sure, I'm keenly aware that remembrance tends to deepen our humility as well as to increase our godly sorrow for sin. It tends to make us grateful for mercies and to make us magnify the greatness and freeness of divine love. It tends to inspire us with a stronger love for Christ, who has placed us so high in heavenly places, and it tends to quicken our zeal and activity and mission for God. And hence, this remembering of our past condition is not to be a depressing, self-accusing thing that will kill hope and heart, but rather that which leads onward to a higher joy and more complete consecration to the Lord's work. But what about those who stood apart, those far away for lack of knowledge of the mercy of God? In his letter, Paul states, the Gentiles were without God because their knowledge of him was incomplete. If they had no revelation of the Holy Spirit, they had no faith in him, nor did they know how to trust. They had no union with him, they were all alone with themselves, and they were without pardon, life, grace, hope, and comfort. These people had no experience of the threefold blessings of the gospel, the grand totality of all Christianity, Christ for us, Christ in us, and Christ with us. And to some extent, I am saddened today, for I believe this condition is not unlike what many are experiencing right now. You feel apart from God, lonely, in despair, depressed, feeling hopeless, lacking direction, separated from Jesus Christ. And I recall several years ago, there was a young woman who came to prayer meeting that always sang the song, Without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. And when one thinks about it, it's a deplorable thing for a soul to be drifting along without God and even more deplorable for a man or woman to die without Christ. And to be without Christ means it is just you and your own resources. It means you are a stranger from the commonwealth. It means when you are sick, you have no hope of healing. In sorrow, with no hope of comfort. Lonely, with no hope of divine companionship and in distress, no hope of that sweet hour of prayer. Beloved, that's what it means to be cut off with no one to turn to, no one to hear you, and no one to help you. It's like being on a mountain without a guide rope, like being in the wilderness without a guide, like being on a stormy sea without a compass. 
what a terrible thing to be away from God. And how helpless to know you can't change your condition. But what can be done? What will relieve this? What can change this? If we look closely, we can see a figure emerging from the east, emerging from the city of Bethlehem, a figure coming out of a far country. His garments dyed red in his own blood. And looking closer, you'll see the nail holes in his hands and feet, the marks on his forehead, the scourging of his body. This is Christ Jesus, the one who wrote down the petition, the one who brings those once far off closer to God. And he doesn't use coercion. He doesn't use force. There are no sledgehammers, no inducements of money, for none of these can change a person's heart. Jesus came and preached peace to us in need. He came and fixed it up between us and God to get us who were far off, now close up. We read in verses 14 and 16, For Christ himself has brought peace to us. He united Jews and Gentiles into one people, when in his own body on the cross, he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with his commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating himself one new people from the two groups. Together, as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of his death on the cross. It's a fact you can't get close to God any other way. Not by reason, human wisdom, not by science, not by knowledge, not by good works. Not by any human measure can a person be reconciled to God. Or you may look for some good person to help, some gifted philosopher, Poet, deacon, preacher. However, my Bible tells me in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There was no one righteous, no, not one. That means there's none gifted enough, wise enough, good enough, or resourceful enough, none that I know of, and all the while, our soul continues to cry out for God. And we ask him, how can I get close to him? How shall I know him? How can I satisfy this loneliness and despair? There's a hunger in me which the world cannot satisfy. There's a hunger in me which needs living bread. There's a thirst in me which cries for living water. There is a hurting in me which seeks to be healed. And when I'm farthest away and think there is no way, thanks be to God. There comes one, like the Son of Man who says to me, Are you trying to get to God? Yes, I am. My soul cries out, but I can't find him. I need him. I've been down long enough. I've been hurting long enough. I've been depressed long enough. I've been sad long enough. I've been grieving long enough. And I have been lost long enough. I've been away far too long. I need to come home to God. And Jesus says to me, I am the way. I'll open the pathway if you want to get to God. Come by me. In fact, you can use my name. I'll countersign your request. I'll endorse your petition. I will be co signer with you on your application. Use my name. Ask anything of the Father in my name. Whenever you, whatever you need, just ask 
the Father in my name, Jesus. In sorrow, call my name. When trouble comes, call my name. When friends forsake you, call my name. When you don't know which way to turn, call my name. Oh, I just love to hear you call my name. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Tell the Father you are a friend of mine. Tell him I died for you. Tell him I put my name on your spirit. Tell him I purchased you with my blood. Tell him you are part of my family. Tell him I paid a great price for you. And tell him I'm coming back for you. And tell him you will sit with me in glory. Oh, the Father knows who I am, for he sent me. And now thank God for hearing your prayers. Thank God we know a name that can change us, change our condition. Pull down mountains, lift up every valley, pick us up when we're down. Straighten out the crooked pathway. Draw us near when we are far off. Thank God. For now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. Be blessed today, my brothers and sisters. Be blessed. Share the Vision Ministries was founded in 1989 by Pastor Joshua McClure to provide Bible-based, Spirit-inspired Christian education resource materials to transform and grow people into a deeper, life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ in the Kingdom of God. To contact Pastor McClure for questions, comments, or topics to enrich our radio program, please send an email to sharethevision31 at gmail.com. To order one of Pastor McClure's life-changing books, visit the website www.joshuaamcclure.com or Amazon or your local bookstore. For those who wish to support our radio ministry, please send your gift to Share the Vision Ministries, P.O. Box 304, Bradford, Rhode Island, 02808. This is Judy Hall Gray for Share the Vision Ministries, reminding you to please join in at the same time next week for Living Faith for Today. If anyone asks you just who I am, tell them I am redeemed. I am redeemed. I've been bought with a price. Jesus has changed.